Hi, this is Tech again, and today I want to go over some uh, 9800 GTXs uh, and also do a volt mod guide for them. Well, for the reference card, anyway, so these here. Now, before I show you the modded card I have, um, I want to tell you something about the cores because these cards come with two different cores. You might be able to actually just tell it. Tell the difference by just looking at them. Uh, you can see the top one is quite a bit smaller. Um, there is a 55 nanometer, so this one is 55 nanometer and a 65 nanometer version. Now, in general, you could say that the 55 clocks better, but if you have a golden 65, it's going to get close to that. Uh, also, Well, this is this is an Asus card, but the reference PCBs on these are surprisingly decent, uh, I would say. Uh, I mean, for L2 you would probably still want an e-power on here. Uh, also memory, uh, my cards all have Samsung or Hynix, but there is, as with most of the cards from this generation, a chance that there might be some Kimonda uh, cards out there, in which case it's basically garbage. Uh, because the memory doesn't overclock very well and it also doesn't scale with voltage, as a matter of fact it scales negatively. Anyways, uh, I would expect um, the Samsung cards to be doing slightly better, but this also might just be this one here being not the greatest sample ever. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt because, well, I have one Hynix card and this is the Samsung card. So this is the one is actually modded and these two are 65 nanometer reference PCBs. This is a 55 nanometer reference PCB. Um, so this one here right now just has this, uh, I think that's the Morpheus air cooler on there. I will throw the single stage on here rather soon, I think. Uh, volt mods on here are pretty basic. Uh, just feedback mods for um, VGPU and VMAM. Now for VMAM, you could in theory, if you have Kimonda, um, sort of do the volt mod in reverse. At the bottom here is, um, this is a 50 kilo ohm variable resistor and the bottom is hooked up to ground currently. Could in theory hook it up to VMAM and you should be able to decrease um, the memory voltage to run Kimondas better. But I would argue that if you are at the point where you're deciding to run Kimondas better, you should probably reevaluate re and just get a new card and, and hope for something like Samsung or Hynix. So that's just a, a theory or well, a theoretical possibility. I'm, I'm also not going to show it in the detailed overview later. So yeah, uh, I think that's, that's about it for this card. No. Again, VRM on here is, I would say surprisingly decent. We have a four phase, a doubled up low sides. We actually have uh, some resemblance of output filtering that is proper, I mean, I would uh, prefer seeing uh, aluminum polymers instead of these um, these post caps. So those are uh, tantalum polymers, not really great for ESR, uh, but they also have a bunch of MLCCs here, so that's fine. Also, reference PCB has dual phase memory power, which is also nice. Uh, I don't think there's really much to complain about this VRM here, unless you are on LN2. So I think for something like chilled water or or single stage this should be fine. Well I will I will soon find out because I'm going to put this one here on single stage and this has I'm not sure if you can see under there it has the exact same VRM on there. And it is 55 nanometers so it should draw a bit less power anyways. So yeah. All in all I expect this to be a pretty easy card to work with. You can 
also have, have some really nice bots to add caps later. All of these MLCCs around the GPU core here are V-core. Uh, same for the ones on the front. So you have a lot of room to attach some additional capacitors, which I didn't do with this one because before I want to do that, uh, I want to have a baseline basically with just um, the bare bones card. There's, there's no cap mods whatsoever on here, just volt mods and monitoring. So also no, no cap mods on the memory. So absolutely nothing. Anyways, I will now move over to the computer and do a quick overview of the bolt mod. Okay, so here we are. Let's start with vGPU. Feedback pin should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in. Right here. But you can grab it way easier at this little pro point here between those two caps. So this is what I would recommend doing. From there, usual stuff, variable resistor, the ground. Now, ground points in the area, you can either use obviously the screw holes or the entire like uh, left side of these capacitor banks. So yeah, value here. I would recommend using something between 200 uh, ohms to 1 kilo ohm. Uh, personally, I used uh, 500 ohms on my card. Actually, no, I think I used a kilo ohm. Uh, but again, either works just fine. Even the 200 works if you turn it up to the maximum resistance now. Uh, your minimum voltage is going to be a bit higher. I think it's like 1.25 volts if I'm not wrong at at 200 ohms. But it, it still is perfectly fine if you have like a high RPM fan or custom air cooler like I have on my card. So here we have memory. Now for this one, uh, you can't see the feedback pin because it's like the first pin on this side. But... There is again a pro point here, which you can use. And that is this one here, right here. So from there, assuming you are not uh, wanting to run Kimonda memories, you want this variable resistor to ground just as with the other one. Now for values here, I would recommend going between 50 to 100 kilo ohms. Uh, on my card it's 50, but um, with memory volt mods, I usually prefer to have a a volt mod that starts out like not increasing the voltage too much. You could obviously also use a 50 and just put a jumper on on like this side here. So you can uh, disconnect this if if you don't want your or if if you think that uh, increasing the memory voltage decreases your stability. So yeah, that's that's basically it for the uh, 9800 GTX reference PCBs, uh, or at least what I think is a reference PCB. Uh, just going by the cards I have. So. Basically, if, you, if your card looks like in the video, then it's the, the right volt mode. Anyways, that's it. Uh, bye.